Well, let's get started with chapter one. Um, chapter one is looking at the British North American colonies, and we're going to look at the North, the South, or New England, um, Southern and Middle colonies. Okay. Um, for the most part, we go in order. I do typically try to do vocabulary first, regardless of where it falls on your notes guides. But if you'll get your notes guides out, and we can go over this. Um, if I have something different than you do, uh, I'm going on a test that's going to be based on what I have. Uh, so make sure you add what I have to yours if it's not there, or if you just didn't add enough, just kind of take a jot down a few notes. Um, if you have any questions as we're going over this, uh, write them down and ask me in class. Okay? All right. So with our vocabulary, um, the first one is the plantation system. Uh, these are large farms owned by wealthy landowners which raised cash crops uh, using slave labor. Um, plantation system is based, of course, on the plantation, uh, and plantations do have slaves. Uh, the size of the plantation is going to be, it's going to kind of determine how many slaves you have. Uh, the cash crops now are tobacco, rice, and indigo not cotton at this point. We'll get to cotton when we get uh, a little bit further, closer to the Civil War. Number two is an indentured servant. Um, these are people who could not afford to come to America on their own. They agreed to work for a landowner for up to seven years in exchange for payment for their trip. Times are hard in England and um, many people have lost their land. They have lost their living. Um, they've moved to cities, there's no jobs, there's no place to live, uh, so the best option is to get a new start. The problem is because they don't have a job, they don't have money, they can't afford the fare to get to America. So, um, someone is going to pay for their trip, but it's not free. Um, if you don't have money, um, basically they sign away their life for seven years and um, they are treated much as what we would consider slaves to be treated as. Um, many were mistreated. A lot of room for exploitation here. This is the primary source of labor um, for about 20 years or so, uh, a good generation um, in that um, until slavery really takes hold um, as, as a system. Uh, the next is salutary neglect. Um, this is not a negative thing. A lot of people look at neglect and think bad. Um, this is kind of a benign neglect. This is just kind of being left alone. Um, and because of the distance between England and the colonies, the English government let the colonies rule themselves. Um, it, it, it would take too long to a problem arises, we write a letter to Parliament, we have to put it on a ship, it has to get there, you have to get it into Parliament, they have to decide it, you have to write the response, put it back on a ship, back, it, it, this way would take months. And so the colonies were just given the right to handle a lot of their problems on their own. I will say this about salutary neglect. Um, let me add this, that salutary neglect actually is one of the major reasons we develop self-government and, and we become very independent even though we consider ourselves, Americans consider themselves loyal to um, England. They were used to taking care of their problems on their own and governing themselves and passing their own taxes. And this is where um, a lot of the conflict is going to come in with the Stamp Act and all of that when we get to Chapter 2. Um, representative government. Um, this is a government in which the people elect the representatives who will rule in their place. Um, they're supposed to represent the people in all the decisions that are being made. Um, this is what we have today. Um, and this is what you see, um, not in the, the same way, not in the same manner, but you see forms of representative government um, in the colonies. Uh, next is natural rights. Um, this is an idea that was penned by John Locke. And the idea here is that um, people are born 
with rights that no government can take away, and these include life, liberty, and property. Um, the, the point here is that our rights don't come from government. Um, our rights come from um, nature. Uh, we are born with them, okay? Uh, social contract theory is also an idea um, by John Locke, and it states that if a person, um, excuse me, if a government fails to fulfill its role to serve the citizens, then the government should be replaced. Um, you can look at this another way. If a government fails to protect the natural rights of the people, um, then, then the government should re be replaced. Okay, um, and, and these are going to be two founding ideas really um, that go into our idea of government and, and really a, a reason for the revolution. All right. Okay. Let's move on and look at the English colonies. Um, this is 1.1 1 .1, um, and I'm going to go each one um, by itself. So I'm going to start with the South and then I'll do New England and then I'll do Middle. And like I said, it's going to go in order um, on your sheet. Um, these are just the big ideas contained in each um, in each region that you need to know. Um, and if there's any names, um, whether your book has it or not, I've tried to include it. So make sure that you have the gist of all of this, okay? Um, the southern colonies consisted of Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. And the first American, British American colony, um, was Jamestown, uh, which is in Virginia, and it was established in 1607. Um, and it was a company that established it. So you think about a company, you think about a business. So take the idea from that, that the, the Southern colonies are founded for economic reasons. Okay. Um, and and y'all know the story. Um, they get to Jamestown, they get off, they look for gold. <laughs> Um, instead of uh, focusing on building homes, planting crops, um, things like that, and, and things don't go very well for them. Uh, what really turns it around for Jamestown, because they were, they were close to failure, uh, what really turns it around for Jamestown is um, they are going to begin to cultivate tobacco, which they learn from the, the Native Americans. Um, tobacco is a very... Uh, it, it's a very labor intensive crop and so they're going to initially use um, Indian slaves uh, then indentured servants and eventually settle on African slaves um, but that also develops the plantation system because there's a lot of money in tobacco they're going to grow a lot of it which takes a lot of land um, the other cash crops besides tobacco were indigo and rice, um, again, which you see throughout the South. Plantations themselves, since they are so large, um, hundreds, if not thousands of acres um, would be, uh, you know, in a plantation. These are isolated um, and plantations are self-sufficient. If they need it, they probably make it. Uh, they they build their own homes, their own sheds, whatever they need. They build um, nails. They have a blacksmith. Um, they grow their own food. Uh, they would, you know, even cloth. Um, they would weave their own cloth. So so what you've got here is no real need for cities. Okay, just because they're so isolated. So um, because of the plantation system, uh, you don't see any large cities or centers of commerce throughout the South. Not, not to say there are no cities, um, but to give you a hint, Charleston, South Carolina was their largest city, uh, the largest city in the South. And it's comparatively speaking, tiny. Um, you know, think about New York City. It's, it's tiny um, compared to that. Um, also, you, you think about the fact that because people were so isolated and they lived so far apart, um, I'm going to skip a little bit here, they, they don't really have any public education. Um, only the wealthy are educated and only the wealthy boys are at that. Um, 
tutors would be hired to come in, teach them to a certain level, and then they would be sent away, usually to Europe, um, England or Europe, uh, for a university education, um, at least until we begin to see more universities within um, America. Um, Southern society is a very hierarchical system. It's divided. It's a fairly rigid social class system. Um, at the very top, uh, you have your plantation owners. Um, underneath there, you have your poor farmers. And um, underneath that, you have your slaves. Um, as I stated early, earlier, uh, the South was founded for economic reasons, um, not really religious. Um, that's not to say that there was no religion in the South. Um, the Anglican Church is the established church. Now, this is the Church of England, so um, you, you can imagine that, that they have fairly close, and they're going to remain fairly close um, socially to Britain throughout the colonial period, okay? Um, so make sure that you have at least this. That is not to say that there's no more there, um, but these are the big ideas um, for the South. Okay. All right. Let's move up to New England. Okay. Um, the New England colonies um, are Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, Connecticut. Um, and initially what you're looking at, well, I'm not going to say initially, I would say most most of this here is settled by Puritans. Um, it's not necessarily everyone who moves here is a Puritan, um, but in terms of the first settlement in 18, excuse me, in 1623, Puritans. Um, now, they come to America because they were being persecuted in Britain. So they're fleeing Britain so they can worship freely. But they themselves do not practice religious toleration. Okay, they came for religious freedom, but they don't give it to others. Um, and, and matter of fact, if you went against the church, if you if you dissented, um, then there were consequences. Um, Roger Williams is one example. Um, he didn't like the way that uh, they were treating the Indians, the way they f he felt like they were cheating the Indians out of their land. Um, so he's going to be exiled. He's going to leave, leave, and he is going to found um, what later becomes Rhode Island. He actually founds Providence, um, but that becomes Rhode Island. Anne Hutchison is another example. Um, she was actually teaching um things that contradicted the church and so she's also going to be exiled uh, to New York where she's later going to be killed in an Indian raid. Um, economically speaking, um, the New England colonies relied on the Atlantic Ocean, um, not just for fishing though that's important, um, but for shipbuilding and for trade. Um, this becomes a commercial center. Okay, and if you skip a little bit, it says it developed large commercial centers. Um, there, these these are the big cities here. Um, Boston is probably the the more prominent at this time period in uh, New England. Um, it's not to say that they didn't farm; they did. Um, they lack the fertile soil and the um, the long growing season, the, the warm climate that the South has, um, their, their soil is rocky, it's just not as fertile. So they're going to be subsidence farmer, farmers. Um, in other words, they grow just enough. Um, they may have a small surplus that they can sell, but for the most part, they are growing just what they need to survive. Okay, um, unlike in the South, um, there is public education in New England. Um, they are going to promote it. Um, they felt like everyone should be able to read and write. Now this is girls as well as boys. Um, this is everyone. Um, and this is very much um, based on their religion. It's based on their church beliefs um, that everyone should be able to read the Bible. Okay, so Public education is considered, and this is a big social aspect that's different than the South, so just keep that in mind. Um, 
the labor needed in New England is not nearly as extensive as what you see in the South, and so you're going to see very few slaves um, in New England. That's not to say there are none, but very few. And matter of fact, if you if you look deeper, you'll see that um, again because of their religion, um, many people in New England disapproved of slavery in general. Okay. All right, make sure that you have those. And I'm hoping that you're able to begin to start, that you're able to see some big differences between um, New England and the Southern colonies. Well, the middle colonies are just that. They're stuck smack dab in the middle. And, and there's a few things that's similar between um, the two. Um, I would say that the middle colonies fit more in with what we are seeing going on uh, with uh, New England, but uh, anyway. Uh, the middle colonies consist of New York, New Jersey, Delaware, and Pennsylvania. Um, what's different here is that there is some religious toleration. That is not to say that it is widely appreciated, um, but there is some uh, religious toleration. Uh, the Middle Colonies are the most diverse region, and if you have to remember a, a word to describe the Middle Colonies, I would say diversity. Uh, culturally, um, they are diverse in that you have the English, you have the Dutch, they get along fairly well with the Native Americans, um, but you have other nationalities coming together in the Middle Colonies. Okay, um, religiously speaking, um, you have, again, this, this big diversity here. You have Catholics, you have um, Quakers, you have some Puritans and, and various other um, Protestant groups there too. Um, and also economically, um, they are uh, fairly diverse. Um, they rely on shipping, but also on farming. So again, you can kind of see that just that diversity there. Fur trading also um, is a part of their economy and, and their close economic relationship with the Native Americans, okay? Because their, even their farming, even though they do a lot and they grow a lot, uh, the farming in the middle colonies is not labor intensive. So um, because again, unlike the South, the, the labor here, doesn't require such intensity, you also see few slaves here. Now, again, part of that's going to be religiously speaking. Um, the Quakers uh, very much um, did not believe in, in slavery, okay? So slavery is not really going to um, be a big factor here. Um, but also, again, because they're um, involved in shipping, um, they're also going to develop some large urban centers. Okay, um, make sure that you have all of this down, and if you have any questions, please come and ask.